What is the moment of inertia? Imagine that I have a disc that is rotating but an angular velocity omega. Can we find an expression for the total kinetic energy of the disc? Well, let's think about it. This disc is made out of individual particles and they're all moving at a different velocity. Let's say that we have one here which is m1, we have another one which is m2, and we have a large number of them. Total kinetic energy will just be equal to a half m1 v1 squared plus a half m2 v2 plus dot 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 adding up all the individual kinetic energies well remember v is equal to omega r therefore we can say that a half m1 now rather than v1 i'm going to write omega r1 squared plus a half m2 and rather than v2 i'm going to write omega r2 squared plus dot 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 all the points on the disc are rotating with the same angular velocity so we can take out a factor of a half omega squared and what we're left with is a sum of all the particles masses let's call that m i multiply by the radius squared I've given it an index i and this is a summation from i is equal to one and let's say that there are n particles this quantity right here the sum of all the individual masses multiplied by the radius squared is equal to the moment of inertia. In other words, we take this particle m and its radius r1 and we take m1 r1 squared and to that we add m2 and its distance which is going to be r2 squared and we do that for all the particles in the disk. We typically call this i which gives us a final expression for the kinetic energy of a half i omega squared. Notice how similar this is to a half mv squared. In a way, the moment of inertia plays a similar role compared to the mass in translational physics. Each object has infinitely many moment of inertias. The reason for that is because we can have infinitely many axes of rotations. For instance, I can take a cylinder and I can start rotating it to an axis which is parallel to the center. Or I could choose to rotate it in a completely different direction. How do we approach problems like that? Well, let's find the moment of inertia of a cylinder with respect to a line which goes vertically through its center. We typically divide the object into tiny pieces of mass dm that are equidistant from the axis of rotation. In the case of a cylinder, imagine that we had a slice of the cylinder. Each point on this slice will be a distance r from the center of rotation, meaning that the moment of inertia will be given by r squared dm. All we would need to do to find the total moment of inertia would be to sum all of those slices dm. Assuming a continuous mass distribution, this will actually be an integral. And if the cylinder is not hollow, we could integrate from zero to r. First, we're gonna to need to express these quantities in terms of the same variable if we're going to integrate. So let's have a look at what dm actually is. So dm is just going to equal to the density multiplied by the volume. What would the volume of this tiny shell of mass dm actually be? Well, we would need to multiply all of its dimensions to get that. So we're gonna get the dm will be equal to rho multiplied by, the circumference is just two pi r, the thickness is dr, and the length is l. Let's plug this into the integral directly, and we're going to find that i will be equal to the integral between zero and r of 
r squared times dm, which is going to give us rho 2 pi r l dr. Now this integral is in terms of dr and we can simplify this further. So we can see that rho 2 pi and l are constant, so I can take them outside of the integral sign. So it's going to be rho 2 pi l. What I'm left with inside is the integral between 0 and r of r squared times r, just going to give me r cubed dr. Let's just check that's right. So that's out, that's out, that's here, r is in, r is out, dr. Okay, yeah. Meaning that the moment of inertia will just be equal to rho times 2 pi multiplied by that length. Now this integral here will be equal to capital R over 4 divided by 4. The moment of inertia is typically expressed in terms of the overall mass. The density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. So this is equal to m over the volume of a cylinder is going to equal pi r squared multiplied by l. So let's plug this expression into here and then simplify and what we get is that i will be equal to m over pi r squared l, so it's going to be pi r squared l multiplied by 2 pi l r to the power of 4 divided by 4. Now I can do one of my favorite things that is to cancel. So pi cancel, cancel, 2 4 to cancel, 2 r squared, so we do cancel. And what we're left with is a half m r squared, which is a very elegant result. And this right here is the moment of inertia of a cylinder about this axis. Moment of inertia calculations are incredibly important to engineering and this video will show you just that.